The reason that uh, we've got Ben doing this tonight is because some of you guys know Ben really well, others of you don't. But one thing I want you to know about Ben is that most Wednesday nights, when you guys leave here, you guys go home and, and work on homework or whatever it is that you got to do, almost every Wednesday night, um, unless there's something in his life going on, Ben leaves here and goes to a restaurant with us and writes letters to you guys. Um, for those of you that may have something going on in your life or just need prayer or just need some encouragement or something like that, Ben goes with us and finds out who that is, what's going on, and writes letters of encouragement to you guys. And so Ben is somebody that was put on our hearts to talk about how we as a student ministry can care for one another. So guys, Ben Reed. That's the first step into creating a student-led, Christ-centered community. This week, I'm talking about caring for one another. These first two weeks build on each other because to be cared for, you have to first feel welcome. And it's our job as a church community to make everyone feel loved just as Jesus loved. Acts 2, 42 through 47 says... <laughs> 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 Every day they continued to meet together. <laughs> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to breaking bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who has need. To meet together in the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And Lord added to their number daily of those who were being saved. So, the point of this story to me is to show that complete surrender to God leads to radical acts towards one another. When I was in middle school, I had amazing people here to make me feel cared for. I always wanted to come back every Wednesday night because I felt valued at a time when a lot of people would try to cut me down. In this day and age, there are so many messages which promote and reward self-interest being thrown around by our society that it's hard to ignore those temptations and focus fully on serving others. Another thing that keeps us from caring for others is not knowing how. In verse 42, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. These are all things that were already set out to teach the believers how to serve. We have the Bible for guidance and we have each other for support. One clear command given to us is to care for those in the church. And that starts right here in this building with things like saying hi to someone that's not just a friend or inviting someone to get food and talk. <coughs> the beginning of verse 44 says, and all who believed were together. Much like when we gathered on Wednesday or Sunday, they were in the temples worshiping together which strengthened their bond. Of course we want to go out and care for the rest of the world, yet there's something incredible about caring and receiving care in a small community like this. Sadly, we don't always have this because we aren't, aren't, we aren't always here. It says in verse 46 that when they weren't together in the temple, they broke bread in their homes. This is significant because they lived their lives in constant worship. The goal of this series is to apply the lessons to our lives. One way to do that is to practice here in a safe environment. Our teams like the prayer team, the welcome team, the worship team, and the care for team are here to put what we know to do into practice. Verses 46 and 47 say, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the believers came into the temple praising God, which led them to care for one another, so radically that the only exponential explanation is the Holy Spirit. Any act of love, no matter how small, has a holy element to it. And that's why we can't perform miracles without God's power, and why without submitting to God, this youth program couldn't have grown to where it is or continue to grow. All of us are called to care for people around us, including our enemies. That sounds hard and not fun. What could possibly be fun about one person, or what could possibly happen from one person performing an act of kindness? Acts 4, 33-34 says, With great power, the apostles continued to testify to their resurrection to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in all of them that there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money for the sales. So, all the apostles didn't just start living so radically at once. It started with little acts of love inspired by the resurrection of Jesus. 
From then on out, it was a cycle where more and more people gave up their possessions and time with selfless intentions that worked out for their common goal, increasing their number exponentially. That same God that was with them is with us today and will multiply our possessions when we serve with good intentions. He sees the little things like including someone you don't know in something or helping someone in need, and it works out in your favor, but more importantly, in the favor of the kingdom of heaven. What would it look like if we all took on this lifestyle of caring for people so intensely? So take a second and ask your neighbors now what it would look like. <laughs> Fortnite Bible study? I'm done. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes, okay. So, like it says, there would be no need, but that's a really long term goal. However, there would be things noticeable immediately people feeling comfortable and increased generosity, better friendships and more intimate relationships, more peace and less anxiety as a student ministry. And as a student ministry, we should try to live this scripture out. So my challenge for all of us is to spend time each day to consciously notice someone's need and act on it with love. And so one way we can do that here is because in Acts, we see everyone playing a role to care for one another. And by the same Holy Spirit, we want everyone to feel cared for here. But we also want to be intentional. So the things that we can do is we have row leaders now to make us all feel cared for in our rows. And then, yeah. and then we have the care team, and there's a little board back there that says, I commit to care team. On the way out, you can sign your name there if you would like to Caring is sharing. join the care team. So if you feel called, um, just let someone know and sign up in the back. You can let Alyssa know and Brett know, probably me know. So, yeah, that's it. Oh,